So in general, in Europe, we cannot use non-covalent BTK inhibitors because the only one approved, the pirtobrutinib, was approved by FDA. And it was approved for patients with CLL who have received at least two lines of treatment, including covalent BTKI and BCL2 inhibitor. So, so far, the data that I've also presented at uh, meetings are actually focusing on a cohort of patients who, with CLL who was previously treated with covalent BTKI and then progressed in the majority of cases uh, or ex experienced uh, um, adverse events uh, requiring treatment discontinuation. And then and started uh, pirtobrutinib. And in this setting, we know we can achieve a very high overall response rate, uh, more than 80 percent. Um, and the, the, the response rate uh, um, is associated with an improvement in progression-free survival compared to historical uh, um, cohorts uh, with a median PFS around 19 months that is longer for patients who receive non-covalent BTK inhibitor without previous exposure to BCL2 inhibitor um, around 23 months um, and a little bit shorter for patients uh, who were previously treated also with a BCL2 inhibitor around 15 months. But here we have to take into account that in terms of number of previous line of therapy, the cohort of patients uh, uh, treated with the, previously with a BCL2 inhibitor was enriched uh, of uh, highly pre heavily pretreated patients uh, with a um, median line of previous therapy uh, that was higher compared uh, um, to the cohort of patients who was uh, venetoclax, uh, in general BCL2 inhibitor naive. Uh, so the um, efficacy of pirtobrutinib is confirmed in clinical trials and is now available in US, but there are uh, study currently are going comparing pirtobrutinib with ibrutinib in order to understand if there is uh, any advantage uh, in anticipating the administration of non-covalent BTK inhibitor and also trying to understand if there is any benefit if we add pirtobrutinib to venetoclax plus rituximab compared to venetoclax plus rituximab. But we still have to wait the results of these studies and also the update of the studies uh, um, administering nemtabrutinib that is the other non-covalent BTK inhibitor currently in clinical development uh, that might also be a potential option in patients uh, so far relapsing after covalent BTK inhibitors.